We now need to talk about bark beetles, which brings up a group of insects that can have some very serious impacts on tree health. These include some of the insects that are most involved in death of trees and less commonly some shrubs. And we're going to start with the best known of the bark beetles uh, on conifers, the mountain pine beetle, in this first section. But first of all, bark beetles are a member of the family of, of weevils. Uh, uh, they're, they've got a little snout, as do other weevils, but they're quite quite short snout uh, and these develop under the bark of trees. As we'll see they're going to make a gallery underneath the bark and the larva is going to develop uh, usually more or less perpendicular to a gallery that has been excavated originally by the adult. There are several kinds of bark beetle pests in Colorado's forests and some of these also will periodically enter areas of uh, urbanized plantings as well. But the big uh, bark beetles are, are mentioned here, and in recent years the outbreaks have primarily involved the mountain pine beetle and the spruce beetle, and uh, pinion nips would probably be the big three in some areas up in the high country with white fir. Fir engraver has been quite uh, uh, serious, as well as western balsam bark beetle. But I mostly want to talk about uh, mountain pine beetle The uh, in this first uh, uh, topic here, uh, which is the insect that has been attracting most attention over the past decade. So mountain pine beetle, uh, Tendroctinus ponderosi, on its own is not a particularly interesting looking insect and doesn't have a very fearsome appearance. It's quite a small beetle, yet it is capable of doing tremendous amount of damage to uh, the kinds of host plants that it affects. So Dendroctinus ponderosi, we see the adult in the lower right, a typical larva in the upper right, and the galleries that it produces. It is associated with pines, uh, in particular lodgepole pine, uh, ponderosa pine, and limber pine. Less commonly it will be found in some other kinds of pines. We've seen it affecting uh, Austrian pine in some of the front range communities, but that's more of an incidental kind of infestation. The native hosts are, are the three listed in this slide right here. And during outbreaks uh, they can extensively kill trees and uh, there has been an outbreak that's been going on for uh, close to 15 years, although it is recently concluded or largely concluded that has caused uh, millions and millions of trees to have been killed in the course of the outbreak. So the typical kind of symptom you'd see in an area that's been affected by mountain pine beetle is trees that are uh, changing in color, uh, usually turning quite a, a kind of a brick red first and then a lighter color and then losing all the needles. The most recent outbreak uh, started to ramp up uh, in the early 2000s and peaked in 2008, 2009, 2010 uh, during which time it was affecting uh, uh, a million acres or, or more in the, in the peak years. And uh, this, was, this was a progressive infestation. Some areas were affected, then it passed, and they moved into new areas. At present time, this outbreak has gone into decline, and it has reverted to a, an insect that is causing relatively little damage uh, at present, as it did for about 20 years before the most recent outbreak. There was a, a big outbreak in the late 70s and, and very early 1980s, uh, but uh, uh, we had quite a long period in, in between. And this is an insect that periodically does produce outbreaks in our native forests. The last one, however, was perhaps the biggest one that uh, we've ever seen. So, in some areas, there was extensive uh, damage by mountain pine beetle where uh, large areas, particularly of lodgepole pine, were killed, particularly older pines. In this picture you can see kind of a patchwork of, of greener pines and, and dead uh, larger pines. Uh, the greener ones were areas that had young pines that had been logged uh, in, in a site where it had been logged earlier and those resisted the attacks of the most recent mountain pine beetle outbreak. An insect that it pretty much limits its injury to larger diameter, particularly oldest, uh, older trees. Uh, in very small trees it's unable to survive through the winter. 
Anyway, let's talk about what you might see with the mountain pine beetle and some of the other kinds of uh, beetles that are related to this, particularly those in the genus of Dendroctinus. When these beetles are going to initiate an attack on a tree, what first happens is the adults have to chew their way through the bark and then they will attempt to make a, a gallery underneath the bark along which they'll lay eggs. Now, in the course of trying to enter a conifer, in this case a pine, uh, the trees will typically react by producing pitch. And so, a very common symptom of a mountain pine beetle attack, and attacked by many of bark beetles and conifers, is you'll get what's called a pitch tube, and that's what's being illustrated here. So this is oozing pitch resulting from a wound that has been made by a uh, bark beetle trying to enter the tree. And often the, the pitch out by the tree uh, is, is, is sufficient, so it could even kill the insect. So this, this production of pitch is, is one way that the tree tries to uh, ward off these, these insects or other organisms that may try to enter the tree. And in this case, the pitch out was so robust that the mountain pine beetle was gummed out and the tree wins. So here are some mountain pine beetle pitch outs, we call them, where the tree won. So the ooze from the uh, response of the tree, the sap uh, was sufficient to drown and kill the beetle that tried to invade. So when it's nice and cream colored, like down below, you know, that it usually indicates a successful pitch out. Now when you start to see a little bit of chewed particles of, of bark and it starts to get a little discolored, that indicates that the insect may be successfully tunneling underneath that. So the picture on the right indicates a, a picture, uh, a, a site where a mountain pine beetle likely has successfully overcome the tree defenses and is now tunneling underneath the bark. Now, they're little beetles uh, and uh, the tree can produce a, a good vigorous response in terms of pitch to pitch them out and kill them. So how do, how do these insects overcome these tree defenses? Well, one of the most important ways they do this is through mass attack. Uh, mountain pine beetle and the other conifer feeding uh, 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 bark beetles make coordinated mass attacks on trees uh, through use of a pheromone, use of a signaling chemical called an aggregation pheromone. So some of the very earliest beetles that land on a tree will uh, emit this pheromone that will attract others and, and basically the signal is let us all attack this tree. Together we can overcome this tree, tree's defenses. Uh, alone, spread out, we're not going to win, but together we can overcome it. And if you get a sufficient number of beetles that are simultaneously attacking the same tree, then they can overcome that, that pitch response, and then ultimately they will be successful. Uh, if there's an insufficient number of beetles recruited, the tree wins. Enough beetles, the tree loses, the beetles win. So pitch outs uh, are what we'll see and again if you get enough of the attacks they will overcome the tree defenses and uh, uh, take take over and, and uh, mass uh, through this mass attack. So you don't see one beetle here or one beetle there you either see a whole lot or you don't see any on a single tree. And the pitch tubes will be the external evidence that they have been attempting and often successfully uh, attacking this tree. So once the beetle has gotten underneath the bark, the female is going to make a gallery that will run along the grain of the tree and along that she will lay eggs along this gallery. So there's a couple of eggs indicated in this picture right here. Now another thing that happens with these bark beetles, and, and this happens with all bark beetles to some extent, but it's quite pronounced with the mountain pine beetle and the conifer feeding uh, beetles, is an association with fungi. And with those that attack conifers, the fungi that uh, they bring in are what we call blue stain fungi. So in this picture, what we see is uh, an area just underneath the bark 
the central part of the picture is the gallery that was made by the female and the area next to it you can see there's kind of a blue gray discoloration this is produced by the growth of fungi specifically what we call blue stain fungi these are, are fungi that colonize these wounds the spores were carried in by the beetles the wounds made by the beetles allowed the, the fungi to have an entry into the plant and they grow uh, beyond these points where they have been introduced by in this case the mountain pine beetle so blue stain fungi are another thing we see with uh, most of the conifer f uh, feeding bark beetles and certainly the mountain pine beetle is a prominent example of this so in this picture another uh, photo where the the bark has been removed all we're seeing here is the central gallery made by adults but also you can see the blue coloration discoloration of the bark around it and the and the discoloration is the the fungus growth that has been introduced by the beetles the tunnel is is the effect of the beetles specifically the adult uh, uh, female in making the egg gallery so the blue stain fungi will continue to grow and may grow extensively in the in the plant so uh, it is not uncommon uh, in fact it's it's the, it's usually the norm to see some sort of blue stain fungal growth in in a felled conifer that has died from uh, some some kind of insect cause usually a bark beetle of, of some kind of mountain pine beetle ips beetles and the like now the central gallery is produced by the adult and along which the eggs are laid and then the larvae develop more or less perpendicular to that and the and the larvae of mountain pine beetle are a, again a typical kind of weevil larva they've got a head but no legs and they will chew uh, a, a, across the grain of the, the uh, tree and in sufficient number they will girdle the tree and cause it to rapidly uh, be incapable of, of moving nutrients and water so the effects of this uh, insect is, is largely to shut off the ability of the plant to move water and so you see a series of symptoms that result from that. So you get girdling injuries by the larvae preventing water movement within the tree. Some of the blue stain fungi are also affecting this. Uh, there's multiple kinds of fungi that are producing these uh, discoloration, uh, yeah, grow, uh, discoloration of the wood but some of them also do help uh, Im impact the uh, movement of nutrients and, and water through the tree as well. Regardless, the sum total of this attack is that trees cannot move water. And then you will see the series of symptoms that result from this, where the tree starts to fade, we call it. It starts to change color. Uh, it might be a lighter green and then a red and then a, quite a lighter color than that. And then the needles will fall off. But they can be uh, for a a year or so after uh, the initial infection they may be quite prominent uh, as the they turn quite a, a dark red. Mountain pine beetle generally has a one-year life cycle. There are some variations of this but the general uh, life cycle has the overwintering stage being larvae within the tree. They will continue to develop in the spring pupating usually in late spring and the adults come out uh, uh, in summer. In July mid to late July is typical for when most mountain pine beetles come out. There's variations in this depending on where we're talking um, you know, a little earlier in, in warmer areas, um, sometimes a little late, uh, and it's not synchronized so these will be coming out over a period of, of many weeks. But one year life cycle, overwintering as larvae underneath the trunk, pupating in spring, and emerging the following summer. Once they've exited, they will be coming out through a little hole. Uh, it'll be just a hole not much wider than a pencil lead. And that indicates the insect is done with the tree. Mountain pine beetle will not attack a dead tree. Once they've killed a tree, it's it. So they have one generation in the tree and they're over. So once you see those little exit holes, uh, you know the insects have left and they're no longer associated with that. Now other insects will move into a dead pine, but mountain pine beetle is only capable of developing in a living pine that it then kills. By the way, it's in the, the, the uh, genus Dendroctinus. Uh, the mountain pine beetle has uh, got the scientific name Dendroctinus ponderosi, and Dendroctinus 
means tree killer and uh, several other members of this genus are also important in terms of causing tree death. The southern pine beetle in the southern U.S. Spruce beetle is another one in uh, Colorado and other areas where Engelmann spruce is, is grown. Some evidence that you may have that a uh, mountain pine beetle is, is affecting a tree is woodpeckers. Uh, I mean, the mountain pine beetle is, is uh, damaging and, and can kill trees at the other hand. It also does support uh, uh, some other kinds of insects. So woodpeckers are, are certainly a group that is benefiting when we have large numbers of mountain pine beetle. They'll be seen visiting the plants, flicking the bark off, and feeding on the developing larvae that are underneath the bark. So in a, in a tree that uh, woodpeckers have, have visited that have mountain pine beetle, you might see large amounts of, of flaked bark around the base of the tree. So natural controls uh, of, of mountain pine beetle include woodpeckers. Uh, they include the tree defenses uh, up in the upper left, the pitch out response. They include some other insects. Uh, there's insects uh, indicated in the lower right uh, called checkered beetles or clarid beetles that are bark beetle predators. There are some diseases of mountain pine beetle. And if it gets too cold, the overwintering larvae within a trunk of a tree will be killed. So there are a number of, of natural controls that do affect mountain pine beetle. And ultimately, they do resolve outbreaks and cause the insect to revert again to a low level. But uh, during an outbreak period, the natural enemies may not be sufficient for many, many years. Mountain pine beetle is, is an insect that can be kind of like a, uh, a, a runaway train for a while, and often uh, it doesn't uh, d decline in abundance until there's been quite a bit of, of damage. Mountain pine beetle management involves a couple of different approaches. Uh, we can use insecticides. Uh, in a preventive manner. Uh, there are some novel, interesting uses of pheromones uh, in an anti-attractant strategy to kind of push them off trees. But a lot of it has to do with forest management, including destruction of, of uh, trees that are supporting living stages of mountain pine beetle. So, so bark beetle control uh, typically involves uh, providing conditions that increase the natural resistant mechanisms of the tree, and second, removing infested trees before the adults emerge. And third, spraying trunks with insecticide prior to when adults emerge uh, and lay eggs. And, and so that's what we're seeing here. Preventive sprays would be applied uh, prior to the periods when new adults are coming in. And the new adults are, are coming in usually sometime in July, so these sprays are usually applied in June. The destruction of trees that in, in have uh, living stages of the insect is uh, an integral, integral part of, of the mountain pine beetle management. Uh, uh, trees that have living stages in it, if they can be cut and destroyed, uh, then that will prevent them from emerging. Uh, large numbers of beetles, uh, enormous numbers of beetles can come out of a, of a living tree and subsequently infect many trees the, the next year. And forest management is quite important. Uh, since the ability of a tree to resist the bark beetle is one of the most important things in natural control, ability to produce a, a good, strong pitch-out response, then a tree that is, is growing more optimally and has sufficient water and energy reserves is uh, one that is more likely to be able to resist the effects of mountain pine beetle attacks on its own. So good forest management thinning, appropriate thinning, and, and silvicultural care is always important in, in managing these bark beetles. The verbenone um, anti-attractant is one of the very few cases where we have a pheromone used in, in this way to control an insect. Verbenone is a compound that is actually produced by mountain pine beetle uh, to signal that there have been enough of the insects in a tree uh, they will produce one kind of attractant, uh, a set of a series of compounds that will say, okay, we need more insects to colonize this tree to overcome the tree defenses, but when they're in high enough number, they uh, will be producing large amounts of verbenone, which send a counter signal, says, okay, enough, go somewhere else. 
and uh, verbena and sachets, little, little packets can be put on trees, essentially trying to give the signal that, no, this tree is full, go, go somewhere else. It won't protect uh, the other tree, some other tree will, will be affected, but it can be used to push them off of individual trees. Anyway, mountain pine beetle is the most spectacular of the forest insects we have in, in this part of the world. Again, outbreaks are periodic. Uh, every 20, 25 years or so, we'll, we'll have some uh, outbreak uh, ramping up. The one that has just recently concluded was a big one. Uh, and maybe another 15, 20 years from now, we'll, we'll see it yet again. But fortunately, I think we're over the, the cycle right now at, at this time and uh, something else will come onto the horizon and, and so we have these forests that have a lot of dead trees as a result of the the last outbreak we will see some regeneration some regeneration of uh, perhaps the same kind of plant uh, the um, uh, lodgepole pine in this case we'll also see openings that will allow other kinds of plants to grow uh, we'll see more aspen moving into the, the breaks that have been produced. And this is all part of the natural cycle that has always occurred in Colorado forests. Uh, we just become more aware of it as we uh, live more in the mountains and have more people seeing what's been happening uh, over the millennia. And if there's one thing that we might be able to benefit from this, we have a lot of wood that is now salvageable from uh, the uh, mountain pine beetle outbreaks and with that blue stain fungus associated with it it produces a very interesting kind of wood that can be attractive and, and used in making all sorts of uh, wood materials flooring paneling uh, as well as uh, uh, some bowls and, and other kinds of sculptured items 